Hello friends, I am Arpit and I am here with today's analysis. Today is 25th of January and we are going to deal with three very important topics which are in news. The Jal Jeevan mission. This mission was launched in 2019 with the aim of providing every household with a functional household tap connection in the rural areas with 55 liters of water per person per day. This will also include Jan Bhagidari as, you know, the rural people only will be, you know, developing the sources of water and laying down the pipelines, equipping with skills to repair any, I would say, damages in the tap connections or the pipelines. Women empowerment is also seeked because there are Jal Samitis which are formed in the rural areas which will decide on the plan and implementation of this program and 50% of the members of Jal Samiti will be women. The Jal Samiti will present its plan to Gram Sabha to get final approval and pipelines will be laid, tap connections will be installed. 73% of rural households have been covered under this mission till now. The target year is 2024 that is this year to cover all the rural households the progress is immense but let's see how it reaches its goal or when it reaches its goal next is bsf jurisdiction in punjab border security force is the force which is guarding the indo pakistan and indo bangladesh border in 2021 the government of india increased the jurisdiction of bsf from 15 kilometers from the border areas to 50 kilometers. In states of Punjab, West Bengal and Assam. Punjab has challenged this decision in the Supreme Court. Since it is a matter of center and state conflict, so the Supreme Court is having original jurisdiction over that. Why this jurisdiction, uh, why the jurisdiction of in, uh, BSF was increased? Because you know, increased usage of drones from across the border to supply arms, to supply drugs. All these were happening and they happened inside the territory where BSF had no jurisdiction. But now with the increased jurisdiction, BSF will have controls over it. And finally, Turkey backs Sweden's bid to NATO. Sweden and Finland, these two countries you know, decided to join NATO in 2022 after the onset of Russia-Ukraine war. NATO is a military alliance comprising 31 members currently. Finland got the bid, but Sweden's bid was blocked by Turkey and Hungary. Turkey cited Sweden's support for the Kurdish militants, which Turkey considered, uh, considers as terrorists. And then incident of burning of Quran in Sweden happened, which Sweden claimed that it is a matter of free, free freedom of speech and expression. But Turkey opposed this. But now Turkey is okay with Sweden's joining NATO. Any member who has to join NATO has to get the approval of all the existing members of NATO. Then only that person will be able to or that country will be able to join NATO. So now Turkey has, you know, given the bid for Sweden. So Sweden may be the 32nd member of NATO in the times to come. So let's get started with the first topic that is the Jal Jeevan mission. Now I have said that this mission was launched in the year 2019. It has already provided tap water to 73% of rural households. Now there are some keywords which you need to know and on these keywords UPSC can play with you. The Jal Jeevan mission aims to provide all the households in India with a functional household tap connection. These kind of statements can be asked. But yes, it is not all the households. It is all the rural households. It is not for urban areas. So, we need to take care of this. More than 14 crore rural households have tap connections compared to only 3.23 crore in August 2019. So, when the scheme was launched, 3.23 crore households in rural areas had tap connections, but now 14 crore rural households have tap connections. Through the mission, guided by principle of Sabka Saath, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Vishwas, or Sabka Prayas, India is rapidly advancing towards the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number 6 and what does Sustainable Development Goal number 6 says that clean water and sanitation for all. So this is SDG 6 we are going to fulfill if or we are going to reach there if you know uh, this 100% coverage will be there. Presently 73% rural households have a functional household tap connection. 
बट यस yes, बिफोर दिस वी सेट दैट सबका साथ सबका विकास सबका विश्वास एंड सबका प्रयास दीज आई वुड से प्रिंसिपल और दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रिंसिपल गाइड दिस जल जीवन मिशन Why and how? We need to understand that. So we'll go to this picture. We'll see, you know, piped water supply to all rural households by two thousand twenty-four. This is the objective of this. Integrated demand and supply side management of water at the local level. Now we are telling to the rural households or the rural people that if you want water in your households through a tap, you will have to work for it. You will have to create reservoirs. you will have to lay the pipelines we will skill you in government is saying to the rural people that we will skill you to you know do the repair works and all and you know we will pay you also like you know if you are creating a reservoir that is basically a public infrastructure and that can be created under mg narega mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act so you will get the wages also for developing this or creating this reservoir that reservoir will supply the water and you have to be judicious enough to use the water so awareness generation on that aspect will be taken care of that is why integrated demand and supply side management of water at the local level should be there converge with other central and state government schemes i gave the example of mg narega तो जल जीवन मिशन कन्वर्ज विद एम जी नरेगा एम जी नरेगा वी क्रिएट एन असेट दैट इज अ वॉटर रिजर्व ऑयर वी पे द पीपल द वेज इज हुर क्रिएटिंग दिस असेट इन द रूरल एरियाज एंड द रूरल पीपल ओनली बेनिफिट बाई क्रिएटिंग दैट असेट थ्रू गेटिंग दिस पाइप वॉटर क्रिएशन ऑफ लोकल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फॉर रेन वॉटर हार्वेस्टिंग ग्राउंड वॉटर रिचार्ज एंड मैनेजमेंट ऑफ हाउस होल्ड वेस्ट वॉटर फॉर रीयूज इन एग्रीकल्चर ऑल दीज थिंग्स should be taken care of in the future here we see that recycling of waste water we are talking about means we are talking about moving towards odf plus plus this we covered under the swachh bharat mission recently we did a video on uh, indoor the cleanest city where we said or we we covered about circularity or odf odf plus and odf plus plus so here circularity is the goal also so we say that odf plus plus will be achieved now benefits of this jal jeevan mission the nobel laureate dr michael kremers study states that providing safe water can reduce infant deaths infants are below 1 years of age by almost 30% so it will have an a direct impact on infant mortality rate of the country with the potential to prevent 25% of under 5 deaths in india under 5 is considered as a child so cmr child mortality rate will reduce imr will reduce both of these will reduce and 136000 children die annually in india they actually contract diseases maybe diarrheal diseases or due to i would say consumption of unclean drinking water or lack of drinking water due to which they contract diseases like diarrhea and such like and they die even who says that 4 lakh diarrheal deaths can be averted if tap water is provided in every household provided that tap water is you know clean so WHO is also stating that, and this study of WHO was done in this year only, means last year, two thousand twenty-three, twenty-four. The Jal Jeevan Mission can lead to economic savings of up to one hundred and one billion dollars, or eight point three seven lakh crore. Why this is possible, or how this is possible? First of all, deaths will reduce. So, potential of earning increases. If you have access to clean drinking water. diseases will reduce you will not fall ill frequently if you are not falling ill frequently you will be contributing in the economic workforce or in the economic activity you will be earning more you will be earning more you will be saving more it is like this then women women in the rural areas are responsible for getting the water 
and almost half the day is spent in this. They go to far flung areas to fetch water. They get the water. Half the day is gone. And they are not able to participate in any economic activity. Now if water is available in their homes, they will be free. They can participate in any economic activity. They can be part of MG Narega or any other economic venture in the rural areas. More earnings by the women will be equivalent to women empowerment. Will also be equivalent to more savings. That is why we see this figure 101 billion dollars. More savings it can lead up to. Women empowerment. The Pani Samitis have been formed. There are 10 to 15 members Pani Samitis in every rural areas. The Pani Samitis are responsible for planning, implementation, managing, operating and maintaining the village water supply systems. Now 50% of the members in this Pani Samiti are women. Have to be women. It is rightly, I would say, done because women, if they are members of this Pani Samiti, they will be able to design better plans because they know the importance of water more than the men because they have been going and fetching water in far flung areas not men they know how to conserve and judiciously use water in the household course not men and that is why they are part of these pani samitis that is decision making that is why sabka saath sabka vikas sabka prayas or sabka vishwas this principle is guiding this particular mission. Then skill development. The Nal Jal Mitra initiative is a specialized program which equips the villagers with a comprehensive set of skills. What kind of skills? Let's suppose there is a leakage in the pipeline or there is a dysfunctional tap. So they can repair them. These kind of skills, plumbing skills and all will be taught to them. For maintenance of you know that water supply system then employment generation a recent study assessment of employment potential of Jal Jeevan mission states that the mission's employment generation potential during the construction phase is on an average 59.93 lakh person years of direct employment and 2.22 crore person years of indirect employment 11.1 lakh person years of additional direct employment annually during the operation and maintenance of the stage. All in all, in a nutshell, employment generation has also happened to implement the Jal Jeevan mission. This is what needs to be understood. Now, how transparency and efficiency is maintained? Now, since this article in the Hindu was written by the Minister of Jal Shakti today, so you will be seeing all the positives, positives, positives here. But yes, the last slide I will, you know, let you know the shortcomings of this particular scheme which was not written by the minister but yes as aspirants it is important for us to know but yes what the minister says about how transparency and efficiency is maintained the Jal Jeevan mission has a dashboard that gives real-time updates progress reports and so on ensuring transparency and efficiency in water resource management it also ensures continuous monitoring and surveillance of water quality parameters so water quality parameters, how they are ensured? Multiple labs have been opened at the state level. And anyone can walk in with the water in these labs, get its quality tested with a minimum cost. So this is the, the Department of Drinking Water and Sanitation maintains a proactive water quality management information system. Now this helps detect contamination or deterioration in water quality thereby enabling prompt corrective action and grievance redressals. So this is all there when you know to ensure efficiency and I would say promptness. Now I was talking about the shortcomings. This was not there written in uh, the article by the minister but yes it is important for us aspirants to know because you know we need to have a balanced view of everything. So the shortcomings of this Jal Jeevan mission the first is even in villages officially certified as having 100% coverage of functional household tap connections, many households do not have taps. Some do have taps but are not getting any water through them. Even in the best case scenario, such households get no more than 2 hours of water. Many houses are not connected with pipes even. 
and quality of water supply is a challenge. So these are some shortcomings and I will not say that you know these shortcomings will be pan India. In certain pockets these shortcomings can be there. But since the objective of this uh, Jal Jeevan mission is to provide 100% rural households with a functional household tap connection with 55 liters of water per person per day. Definitely these points on the screen can highlight towards the shortcomings of the entire mission because the objectives are not being met. So this is like that. Next is BSF jurisdiction in Punjab. The border security force is the full form of BSF. It is responsible for guarding the Indo-Pakistan and Indo-Bangladesh border. And, you know, in 2021, a decision was taken by the central government that the jurisdiction of border security force in the border areas will be extended from, so let's suppose this is the border, this is Pakistan, this is India. So border security force initial jurisdiction was up till 15 kilometers. But now, it has been extended to up till 50 kilometers. So BSF earlier was here. Now BSF is here also. Now why this jurisdiction has been extended, we will see. But as of now, we will see that where these, this jurisdiction has been extended. This jurisdiction has been extended in Punjab, West Bengal and Assam. It had already been 50 kilometers in Rajasthan. Already 50 kilometer jurisdiction was there in Rajasthan. And 80 kilometers in Gujarat. Because Gujarat also shares a boundary with Pakistan. But this particular 50 kilometer jurisdiction decision of the government in 2021 reduced this to 50 kilometers. This status quo was maintained, increased this to 50 kilometers in three states that is Punjab, West Bengal, and Assam. So it was like this. The Pan Punjab government challenged this in the Supreme Court. That is why we are studying this. Now, the mandate of BSF the BSF was created after the enactment of Border Security Force Act in September 1968. So it is a statutory body. Section 139.1 of the BSF Act allows the central government through an order to designate an area within the local limits of such area adjoining the border of India. So as I drew that map, India, sorry, Pakistan, India. Now adjoining the border, earlier 15 kilometers it was there, now 50 kilometers. It, is, it has been extended because the central government has the authority to designate an area within the local limits where members of the BSF can exercise powers to prevent offences under any acts that the central government may specify. The jurisdiction prior to the notification issued on October 2021, BSF could exercise its powers within 15 kilometers of the border in Punjab, West Bengal and Assam. The center expanded this to within 50 kilometers of the border. So this was basically the expansion. Then. Why has the jurisdiction increased? We need to understand this. This expansion was in response to the increased use of drones and unmanned aerial vehicles by Pakistan. These drones and UAVs were used to supply drugs were used to supply arms and small small ammunitions also. All these illicit things. And this year in, in uh, mains also there was a question asked in GS3 on this. Now, which have a long range capabilities and enable surveillance and the smuggling of arms and fake currency also. Fake currency was also supplied. Now the menace of cattle smuggling is the second reason as smugglers often seek refuge outside BSF jurisdiction. They were always seeking refuge outside BSF jurisdiction and whenever they got a chance, they used to smuggle cat. A lot of cattle smuggling happens on the Indo-Bangladesh border. Reason, in Bangladesh, there are many slaughterhouses which slaughter these cattle and export the, the, their meat. 
and india has the largest cattle population so this is there then uniformity is achieved the solicitor general tushar mehta also claimed that the notification makes dsf jurisdiction uniform across the states as the 50 km limit was already in place in rajasthan as i told you the same notification reduced the jurisdiction in gujarat from 80 km to 50 km this also needs to be understood and taken care of now why has punjab challenged it punjab claimed that you know maintaining law and order is under the ambit of state government state list but since bsf's jurisdiction has increased theek hai 15 km tak to be understand but till 50 km the jurisdiction has increased it will be in violation of the law enforcement agencies of the states also over there that is the police there may be certain times when police and bsf will be contradictory to each other because both are you know maintaining law and order so they can clash and this is against the federal structure now in 2021 mr channi was the chief minister of punjab and at that time as soon as this decision was taken he expressed regret and said that federalism is dying in india so that point where the state governments are entitled for subjects like police and public order there you know bsf's jurisdiction is increasing and it is pointing fingers towards the federalism practiced in india the notification was issued without consulting any of the states concerned this was also one of the concerns of the punjab government now the argument put forward by punjab in front of the supreme court supreme court will begin to hear this case in 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 some time from now but yes some i would say pre litigation formalities have been done so in december 2023 punjab's uh, advocate additional advocate general said that a large number of cities and towns would fall within this 50 km jurisdiction including cities like amritsar whereas in gujarat and rajasthan most areas along the international border are sparsely populated because in rajasthan we have that desert in gujarat we have those marshy lands the salt pans and all okay so marshlands or deserts are there which are hardly populated so it doesn't impact as much over there but in punjab the cities are densely populated which are within 50 km from the border so it can impact you know the federal structure of the country where the police forces the state police can come in contradiction with bsf in multiple situations and finally turkey backs sweden's nato bid nato is a military alliance having 31 members presently what does a military alliance mean now these 31 members if any non member attacks any one of these 31 members then all the 31 members consider this an attack on them and they collectively attack on that non member so this is what the main theme of nato is finland and sweden had been wanting to join nato since 2022 that is the onset of russia ukraine war sweden per se has not been involved in any war since last two centuries it remained neutral during the two world wars even during the cold war it has russia in its neighborhood which does not want you know any country to join nato because you know if any country joins nato they will be against them ukraine wanted to join nato that became one of the reasons of war between russia and ukraine ukraine still wants to join nato but is not you know anywhere near joining nato right now because nato countries also understand this fact that if ukraine joins nato then the war will be escalated between russia and ukraine because russia will be attacking ukraine which will be a part of nato and then all the nato forces will have to attack russia which will definitely escalate the war so finland's inclusion in nato was done in 2023 last year sweden's inclusion was blocked by turkey and hungary now if you have to become a member of nato all the members of nato already existing members of nato have to agree there has to be consensus on membership then only membership will be there if there is no consensus consensus means even if one country is against 
the inclusion of any member then inclusion does not happen so here turkey was you know opposing sweden's inclusion but now turkey's parliament has supported its membership for a new country to join nato all the existing members have to approve it turkey and hungary had been opposing sweden's entry for almost the past 2 years why they had been opposing entry we should know that now there is a group known as kurdistan workers party pkk actually this group is active in turkey iran syria iraq they want to establish their own country kurdistan so since 1984 their movement has been going on and turkey considers kpp or pkk as a terrorist organization kurdistan workers party as a terrorist organization but sweden went soft on groups like pkk so that was turkey's i would say major contention with sweden second is quran burning protests happened in sweden a few years ago and sweden said that you know it is a matter of freedom of speech and expression those who are burning they are expressing their i would say discontentment against quran and this was not liked by turkey turkey at one point of time was the spiritual head of the muslim world now also it has i would say a major standing in the muslim world so turkey did not like those activities happening in sweden that is the quran burning activities hungary had been seeing as following turkey's lead in blocking sweden so why was hungary doing it turkey was doing it so hungary was also doing it but hungary another reason was there its grievances were there where sweden's negative remarks about the rule of law and state of democracy under orban so viktor orban is the name of the leader of hungary so sweden stockholm is basically the capital of there so that has uh you know at times criticized the rule of law and democratic ideals in hungary under viktor orban so hungary was also blocking you know sweden's bid so why does sweden wants to join nato so as i said that sweden had not fought a war in two centuries neutral through the two world wars and the cold war also and in recent years it joined the european union and collaborated with nato it showed no intention of actually joining the military alliance but this neutrality had to be abandoned after russia invaded ukraine and russia is in the neighboring region of sweden so sweden was also fearful that today ukraine tomorrow may be sweden so in order to safeguard ourselves you know we should be joining nato and there was a lot of public outcry also for the same so sweden as you know in 2022 sweden and finland both of them they you know proposed that we want to they kept a proposal in front of nato that we want to join nato so finland became a member of nato in 2023 and probably 2024 now sweden will become a member because turkey has given rest and turkey and hungary both have given rest to their reservations for sweden joining nato now what is nato it was formed in 1949 the, the the era was the era of cold war where the western countries or the capitalist countries they formed this military alliance by signing a treaty in washington that is why it is also known as washington treaty it is a security or a military alliance of 31 countries present if sweden becomes it will be 32 from north america and europe nato's fundamental goal is to safeguard the allies freedom and security by political and military means it is a system of collective defense now article 5 of nato says that an attack against one ally is an attack against all hence all attack so in 2001 afghanistan based terror outfits like al qaeda they attacked usa 9/11 so the nato forces were present in afghanistan for good 20 years from 2001 till 2021 although those nato forces were dominated by american forces american personnel were more in number but yes you know the nato forces were present 
headquarters is in Brussels, Belgium. And here we can see the membership over the years, 1940s who became the members, 1950s who became the member, 1980s who became the member, 1990s who became the member, 2000s who became the member, 2010, 2020, North Macedonia, 2023, Finland over here. And it can be 2024, Sweden over here. Is it important to memorize the membership? Yes, it is important to memorize the membership of NATO. Because 30, 31 members are there. So we should know that. What are, who are the members? Here on the map you can see, uh, these are. this is America, this is Western Europe, this is the Atlantic Ocean over here. And this portion is the North Atlantic Ocean. So North Atlantic Treaty Organization comprising of countries from both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. So this is North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO which is. And this is it from today's session. I will be meeting you tomorrow now with more such informative news pieces. Till then you guys very well know what to do. Keep studying, keep reading, keep writing and most importantly keep revising. Namaste. Jai Hind.